Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for kicking my friend out of my house even though she has nowhere else to go? My boyfriend, 30 male, and I, 28 female, moved into a fairly large house together last year. When all the COVID things started getting out of hand, we decided to open up our house to one of our friends, 30 female, and my boyfriend's cousin 19 female. The friend who moved in with us, Kate, fake name, lost her job before the pandemic and two months ago at the end of lease, she couldn't afford a place to live. My boyfriend and I have a common friend group that we knew since the college days, around 7 years. Kate joined this group 2 years ago. When our friends informed us of her losing her house, we decided, hey, we have free space come stay with us for a while, until you can find a permanent solution. We also covered the food expenses while she helped with the chores. She accepted, and moved in within a few days. When she first moved in, she was acting friendly with me, but as time progressed, she started becoming colder and colder towards me, but was still friendly with my boyfriend. A month ago, she started acting weird. While we were watching Netflix, she started sitting in between my boyfriend and me, touching or hitting his arm lightly when she was laughing, touching my boyfriend's neck or hair while saying good morning to his ear, or trying to massage him constantly. I didn't know what to do, especially because my boyfriend was not saying anything at the time, and I didn't want to be the crazy girlfriend. However, he sat me down a week or so ago, and told me he was extremely uncomfortable by the way Kate was behaving. Let me tell you, I was so relieved that I was not the only one who was thinking she was acting strange, lol. He said, when I'm not around her behavior only increases and he didn't know what to do. Because he was scared of telling me this as he thought maybe he was overthinking it. We decided to speak to her if she did it again and went to bed happy. Two days ago, I drove to my parents' house to visit them and help with their needs as they don't go out. I got a text two hours into my visit from my BF, asking me to come back home urgently. When I returned, everyone in the house was yelling and I was very confused. When my BF saw me, he said that he wanted to talk to Kate about what she has been doing was making him uncomfortable, and apparently, she didn't take this well, because she said she did this with everyone, and when I took my boyfriend's side, more yelling and calling names happened. We told her to get her things and get out. I thought our friends would take our side when we told them about this, but now the whole group is divided. Most of them said yes, she was wrong if she was making us uncomfortable, but that, she is just a touchy person, and we were a-holes for kicking her out in a pandemic when she had nowhere else to go to. I trust my boyfriend very much, as he has been nothing but an honest partner for the past five years. He said he decided to talk to her because she kept caressing his arm and touching his thigh, and he hated it. So, I wanted to ask am I the a-hole for kicking her out? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. If it was a male friend touching your inner thighs and giving you unwanted massages, people would be disgusted. Why is there a double standard for men? 100% agree with this. If a guy friend was doing this to me, I would definitely raise hell, but my boyfriend was even scared of telling me in case he was not taken seriously. I felt so apologetic towards him for making him feel that way, so I'm baking for him and his cousin today haha. -ha. Not the a-hole. She is sensitive as code for, she rocks the boat and everyone else needs to work extra hard to steady it. Don't steady the boat. If they think you are jerks, tell them they can take her in. You deserve to not feel uncomfortable in your own home. Beyond that, a core tenet of consent, is that the behavior is unwelcome. When told explicitly, the offender needs to back off, not claim they did nothing wrong. That is now nice guys behave, and apparently Kate does too. We had a huge argument with the friends over this. They thought as long as she apologized, which she didn't, because she didn't think she did anything wrong, we shouldn't have kicked her out. We talked to them before she moved in, whether someone else can take her in, but they all had valid and personal reasons on why they couldn't. As far as I know, no one offered so far either. Not the a-hole, saying she is like this with everyone sounds like BS, she doesn't do it to you. She was being flirty and making advances on your boyfriend. It looks like she has a crush, and no respect for boundaries or consent, and it was only going to be a matter of time before she tried to take advantage of him. Innocent people are usually apologetic, guilty people throw tantrums and claim to be the victim. Because of the character count I couldn't add this, but she and I were never really close to begin with because of clashing personalities. I am more of an 80 year old grandma on the inside and she is very live loud type of person. I don't know if she had a crush, but her developing feelings in two months seems a little weird to me. So I questioned myself a lot. Now for the next story. 
Am I the a-hole for being mad at my wife for moving my son's stuff out of his room? I, 37 male, lost my son in 2016 from leukemia. I was a single parent, and taking care of my sick son on my own with no one to show support or offer help. He passed away at the age of 11, he always loved sports such as hockey, soccer, and he used to decorate his room with sports posters on the wall, sports related toys in the shelves and that kind of stuff. When he was in and out of at the hospital, he'd decorate his room even though he had little energy he loved to do it and considered his room his safe place. This is hard for me to even talk about, because whenever I walk into his room and see his touch in the room and I'd feel him near, this gives me comfort knowing my son had happy days, even though there were few. His room is the same and I haven't moved anything, I just leave it like it is not wanting to ruin it. I've been married to my wife for 3 months now, my stepdaughter moved in with us last month and my wife told me she didn't like her new bedroom at all. She saw my son's room several times and said it looked nice, but I didn't think she wanted it. I have 3 rooms in my house, and my stepdaughter started insisting on taking my son's bedroom. My wife asked if I wanted to change my mind, but I told her that this is my son's room and it will stay this way. My stepdaughter didn't like that, and took it as in I have no respect and consideration for her feelings. I already explained to her, but she won't understand. Even though her room is the same size as my son's. My wife wanted to give the room to her daughter, seeing that it's the right thing to do and said, that I was giving it too much thought. I told her no, and that was it. But yesterday. My stepdaughter called me and told me her mom was busy moving her stuff into my son's room. She probably thought that I knew, so she was surprised that I was upset. I got home and my wife told me that all my son's stuff is in the other room, and all she did was just switch rooms. I couldn't believe it when I saw my son's room upside down. I was so mad I told her she wasn't allowed to take the room without my consent, and she said that I wasn't being supportive and a good parent to my stepdaughter when I'm behaving like this. I told her this had nothing to do with her it's about my son's memory. The room has been like this for years and for her to empty it and move out his stuff like that felt wrong to me, no matter how she tries to explain it. She and my stepdaughter are being quiet and my wife thinks I'm being selfish and unfair to my stepdaughter, even though I helped organize her room when she first moved in. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole for being mad that she did this without your approval, and I'm so sorry for your loss. With this said, it may not be mentally slash emotionally healthy to keep your son's room as is, but this is something you have to get to in your own time, possibly with the help of a therapist slash grief counselor. Being forced to change it when you're not ready, probably isn't going to help you long term, but it would be something to discuss with a professional as soon as you can. I don't know how much of your stepdaughter wanting your son's bedroom is a genuine dislike of her own room and how much of it is your wife gently manipulating her into wanting it, as an excuse to make changes, so while I think your wife is the A, I think there's a good chance your stepdaughter is not the A, and is just being used in this situation. Looking into what they call complex grief may help OP with reconciling past and present. My sincere sympathies on the loss of your son OP. 1. Sorry for your loss. 2. Not the a-hole, because it wasn't her place to decide her daughter's feelings were more important than yours. 3. You do need to talk to a professional about your grief, since the shrine to your son isn't exactly healthy mentally, even though it gives you comfort. 4. That your wife did this, says that 3 months in you all may need a professional to talk to together, whether counselor or attorney. I vote for an attorney. That's incredibly inconsiderate. Not the a-hole. Your wife completely violated your boundaries and wishes. It was a gross overstepping and shows a complete lack of respect for you and your feelings. How you chose to proceed is up to you, but you are in no way the a-hole. Perhaps family counseling would be helpful? Your stepdaughter comes across as entitled, but that might partly be due to her age? Your wife on the other hand. I honestly can't fathom how she ever thought what she did was okay. Someone else suggested she was the main person pushing for the change. It could be she felt the room wasn't healthy or was a reminder of your past, but whatever the case, she had no right to do what she did. Have you spoken to a grief counselor about the loss of your son? It might be something you find helpful, as I can only imagine the difficult feelings this situation has brought up for you. I'm not saying this because I think there's anything wrong with how you feel, grief is completely normal and many parents preserve the rooms of lost children, but it might be helpful to talk to someone who can support you as you process what has happened. She knew that I already said no, but did it anyway. Now she's trying to cause an issue between me and my stepdaughter, by telling her that I don't care for her because I refuse to let her have my son's room. Which is not true at all. 
My stepdaughter is such a sweet soul, and I'm glad to have her in my life, but her mom is being unreasonable and bitter. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my fiancé I don't want his daughter to live with me? I, 33 female, been with my fiancé, 36 male, for two years and we're getting married in 2021. He's a single dad and has an 11-year-old daughter who doesn't like me at all, despite how much I try to get close to her. She keeps telling me that she wishes her dad never met me. She calls me names such as homewrecker, and it really hurts. She hid my phone many times and deleted important contacts. She'd call people I have a professional and respectful relationship with and bad mouths me to them. I had enough when she took my check that I wanted to take to the bank and threw it away, and told me she did it, to my face. Her dad said she's just a kid and is having a difficulty adapting, but completely ignored that I've been getting hurt because of her. I told him I couldn't take it anymore, and will not have her do these things after we get married. I told him I don't want to live in the same house and he got mad, and said that I was being unreasonable, and that I should give her time and try to understand why she treats me like that. I just don't think I can take any more of this mistreatment and lack of respect. I should mention, 1. I met my fiancé a year after the divorce. 2. I treat her well, but I never try to take her mom's place, which is something she'd mention a lot. 3. Her mom doesn't even try to hide how much she dislikes me and I think her daughter is following her lead. 4. My fiancé doesn't try to even talk about what she did, and say she'll change her behavior with time. Now for the top comments. Whoa! Couple questions. 1. Are you a home wrecker? 2. Where is her mom? 3. Does she spend any time living with mom? Who has primary custody? 4. Does mom do anything to deter slash dissuade this behavior? What is her involvement? 5. What does dad do to dissuade this obviously out of line behavior? 6. Did she have behavior problems before you came into the picture? 7. Have you considered therapy for her or all three of you? I think something more deep seated is up. It's not normal for kids to be this malicious to their step parents. Edit, not the a-hole after receiving more info. I met him a year after divorce, so no, I wouldn't date a married man. Ever. Her mom hates me and has no problem telling her daughter bad things about me. Her dad does nothing and says I'm too sensitive, and expects me to take it and say nothing. I've suggested therapy but he keeps saying not now. Everyone sucks here. Time for you and your fiancé to get on the same page. This is not a situation you put on the back burner until after the wedding. You're marrying a package deal. You don't get your fiancé without his child, period. End of story. What the daughter is doing is awful and hurtful, I get it, but if you can't sort out a plan of attack with your soon-to-be husband, don't marry yet. Banning his kid from your house isn't helping anyone. As for him, what is he doing to get his daughter help to cope? Therapy? Better or different routines at home? School evaluation? Time to get on it, dad. Now for the next story. Would I be the a-hole if I don't share my inheritance with my siblings? My grandpa and I always got along great. We watched football, soccer, together, played cards or chess and visited the horse racetrack together. Sadly, my grandpa passed away about three months ago. His death hit me really hard because I used to spend so much time with him. Last week I received a letter from the probate court informing me that I will inherit his old house and most of his assets. My parents inherited his apartment where he lived in his last years to be closer to us, and my older siblings inherited only a small part of his fortune as far as I know. My brother and sister weren't too happy when they heard that I had inherited my grandpa's old house. His house is worth a huge amount of money, we're talking nearly 2 million euros and my siblings want a share of it. Yesterday evening when they visited, they took me aside to urge me to share my inheritance with them. They think it is unfair I got so much more than they did, and think it would be only fair to divide the inheritance by three. I was reluctant, but they got pushy until my parents heard of this and sent me to my room to talk to my siblings. I don't know exactly what then happened but I heard loud voices and apparently my siblings left the house furious. Now I don't exactly know why, but I don't really want to share my inheritance. I feel like my grandpa wanted me to have it, but I'm also not sure if I'm just being greedy. Would I be the a-hole if I don't share my inheritance? Edit, I'm 17 female, my brother is 22 and my sister is 24. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You had a better relationship with your grandpa than they did, and the inheritance reflects that. Don't budge on it. 
your grandpa left it to you. Also, wanna drop this here because OP's parents sound like parents of the year for standing up for her. Right? When do we ever get parents actually saying something to the extent of, OP had a better relationship out of love, back off. Not the a-hole, your grandfather drafted a will and dispersed his assets as his choice. So right now, you are legally in the clear. I'm going to assume that you were the favorite grandchild? You are the one who spent the most time with him? That's probably why there is an unequal split. There is a reason that your siblings are being less favored. It sounds like your parents have good heads on their shoulders. Talk to them about this to get some clarity. Also, none of this has to be done tomorrow. If somehow things change and you choose to split the inheritance there will be no difference between today and three months from now. Don't make any rash decisions. You will not benefit from moving quickly. Edit, I would also advise posting this to financial advice. They also have a great section on windfalls in their resources which you should read. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.